Beyblade. Attack types seem to be the favourite of most of the community, and also to Karatomi themselves, or at least to the author of the manga and TV series. And who can blame them? They are the most flashy and difficult type of Beyblade to use effectively. That's where this video comes in. Today, I'm going to be breaking down attack types to all their base components that make them so formidable. But firstly, if you enjoy this video, please consider subscribing. We've just surpassed the sub goal from the last video a whole month early, and I cannot thank you enough for supporting my channel. If you're new here, this video is also part of a series, so if you want to see more, I'd recommend you go to the playlist on the top right corner to see my other Beyblade videos. Now, enough stalling, let's get to the real meat and potatoes of what attack types really mean. Using an attack type, your goal is to score points via knockouts or bursts, sometimes both. It'll be very rare that you will outspin your opponent, unless of course it's another attack type. Because of your very low stamina, you'll want to try and end the match as soon as possible, usually within the first few hits. By making it a drawn out match, you will almost certainly lose. Attack types are all about high risk, high reward. I know I normally start talking about parts here, but I'm breaking the mold a bit here, because even more important than your parts is launch technique. If you don't know how to launch your attack type, you will almost certainly lose. When you flat launch, your bay will circle the perimeter of the stadium. That's fine if your opponent is another attack type, but if your opponent is sitting in the middle, they will outspin you. The solution? Banking. Launching at an angle with a high friction tip produces this flower pattern. This allows you to hit bays sitting in the middle and potentially burst them or knock them out of the stadium. Next up from the launch technique is what makes it work. Friction. Attack types want to generate as much friction as possible meaning the best attack type tips, such as Extreme, Quick, and, to a lesser extent, Evolution, all have their point of contact to the stadium made out of rubber. High friction tip means high speed and high knockout resistance, so long as it's touching the ground. Blades like Guilty and Rage plus 3A have ramp-like contact points that can destabilize bays or even launch them into the air. When choosing your driver, consider just how much friction you want. Variable, when worn or awakened, and Jolt generate a lot of friction, but the cost of that is control. Too much friction and you risk losing your flower pattern, or worse, a self-KO, giving your opponent a free point. The quick driver, in my opinion, is the best medium between speed and control. Extreme is a little bit faster, and a little harder to control, but performs around the same idea as quick. When picking your layer, some people prefer to have lopsided weight distribution. I personally would advise against it because it's a bit of a risky move, but the idea behind it is sacrificing even more of your stamina in return for hitting your opponent at an awkward angle, causing them to either burst or destabilize them to the point they topple over and lose all their spin at once. Something like Hollow would be branded as being used for this, however, in actuality, Hollow when paired with the 4A chassis actually makes it better for defense type combos when you even out the weight distribution. My preferred type of layer for attack type is the tried and true big contact points. In Beyblade Burst DB, there are really only four meta attack Beyblades, those being Savior, Guilty, Ultimate, and Xiphoid. Savior and Ultimate have a lot in common, both being right spin, having three prominent contact points, and both originating from a Valkyrie Beyblade. But they have a slight difference to one another. In order to be good, the Savior Blade needs to be Awaken. This means using your Beyblade until these three little rubber nubs fall off. You could cut them off technically, but that would mean your part is not legal in tournament use, as it has been modified using external tools. To save you the headache of constantly battling to get access to the actually good contact points, just use Ultimate. It's more balanced, but has slightly less power than Awakened Savior, so it's up to your discretion which one you'd choose. Continuing in Wrightsman Attack is Xiphoid. It is actually in the category of unbalanced attack types that I mentioned earlier. However, I think it makes it its own. Xiphoid is best paired with the Excalibur Core and Xanthus Disc because of this, making 75% of its stock combo actually viable. Xiphoid only has one main contact point, but that's all it needs. The Metal Sword Tip. When it connects, it is able to deal out massive damage. When paired with the Excalibur Core, after it loses clicks, it produces a sword that makes it even more unbalanced and gives that one contact point even more weight. Excalibur also has a BU lock, which pairs up with Xanthus, making it harder to burst at the very end when the sword is released. Even more reason why these parts go together is the Xanthus Disc. You guessed it, it is also unbalanced, 
and on that last click where the sword comes out and it gets extra burst resistance, lines up with the sword creating even more weight into that one attack point. Some people would argue that Xiphoid Excalibur is the best right spin attack combo, and they have the results to back it up, but for newcomers, I would recommend starting off with Ultimate, or Guilty, as they are slightly easy to use. Speak of the devil, Guilty. Guilty is the sole meta left spin attack type in DB, and it excels at it for a different reason to the aforementioned Beyblades. Guilty has two big contact points on either side, that also have extra weight because of the metal dragon heads. These contact points slope upwards to create a ramp which can destabilize or launch opponents out of the stadium. Because of this, Guilty has dominated the Beyblade meta, just like its predecessor, Rage, for quite some time. Only recently, because of the Zeal Driver, has it had some very promising defense type counters. As far as cores go, you'll want something with good burst resistance to prevent you from self-bursting due to the recoil from high impact blades and high friction tips. As mentioned before, Excalibur is a very good core, just only when paired with Xiphoid and a BU locking disc like Xanthus. If that combo doesn't appeal to you, Kerbeus and Bahamut are cores with very good burst resistance. Check out the defense type video to find out why. As for more typical cores, I would recommend Balial 3 for right spin, or Valkyrie 2 if you can't get a hold of it from the expensive triple pack, and Longinus for left spin, because the added weight from the metal helps with knockout resistance. For the disc, if you want to go for a glass cannon build, I would use Nexus Plus S in attack mode to add four more contact points underneath the layer. One thing to mention, this can make banking impossible with shorter drivers, like Awakened Evolution or Variable. Because this gear is so wide, it can scrape, so make sure to use taller drivers if you decide to use it. Xanthus is another good disc, but for the sake of redundancy, you already know why. More traditional discs that I would recommend for attack types would be Giga and Fortress due to their weight. I should also mention that Giga has slightly better LAD than Fortress, which, while normally wouldn't matter for attack types, may slightly help your odds at winning against an opposite spin attack type. To summarize what makes a good attack type, you'll want a core with good burst resistance to defend against your own base recoil. You'll want a blade with good contact points to damage your opponent, a disc that is either heavy or can be used to attack better, and a tip that generates a lot of friction and you can control easily when banking. So I guess this is the end of the video. Thank you for making it this far. I never expected this channel to do so well making Beyblade videos. I originally started this as a Splatoon channel, as you can see from my channel icon. Which brings me to my next question. After this series is completed, what other Beyblade videos would you be interested in seeing? I was thinking about videos recapping seasons of the show reviewing new releases, and trying out interesting combos. Anyway, that's enough from me. Milgo signing off. Peace.